Hi, I'm Holly West, Project Officer with Australian Seabird Rescue, and today my talk is The Evolution and Growth of New South Wales Turtle Watch Citizen Science Nesting Program. Hi everyone, I'm Holly West. Thank you for joining us today and thank you to the organising committee. I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of country in the Ballina area, the Bundjalung Nation, and also the many mobs that we've worked with on the northern New South Wales coast. We pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. I'd also like to acknowledge the support of our collaborators on this. The New South Wales Turtle Watch program has been developed by Australian Seabird Rescue, is supported by the New South Wales Government Saving Our Species program and the Marine Estate Management Authority. We'd also like to recognise all the New South Wales uh, parks and wildlife ranges who have collaborated on this program and also to Dolphin Marine Rescue Team for their help throughout the seasons. Australian Seabird Rescue began a citizen science program called Make Turtles Count in 2008 with funding and guidance provided by WWF. After increased local interest in nesting events, and the program was redeveloped as the Sea Turtle Nest Monitoring Pro Project in 2017-18 season. With high numbers of nests reported in 2017-18, the question was asked, are numbers increasing? This led to the partnership opportunity with the Saving Our Species program and then was redeveloped into New South Wales Turtle Watch. Almost all sea turtle species are considered threatened or endangered with many populations showing potential declines, such as the Southwest Pacific loggerhead population found along the east coast of Australia, which has declined by 80% since the mid 1970s. The estimate is that only one out of 1000 will survive to reach maturity. With increasing global temperatures, the New South Wales coastline may provide refugia for nesting sea turtles, offering beaches with cooler sand temperatures and coastline with relatively less disturbance from urban development. The first step of this program was to do a historical review of the data to uh, take a look at trends, distribution and fate of nests and how this could impact the citizen science program. The data for the historical review was sourced from the New South Wales National Parks and Wildlife Database elements and additional data and information was added from Australian Seabird Rescue records and individual rangers records. Each record was checked and validated resulting in 127 nesting activities since 2000. Now these are only the nests that have been reported and found. There is no amount of survey effort involved so it is not possible to establish any potential trends as not all beaches were surveyed. The historical review revealed that nesting activities primarily occurred from the Queensland border to the Foster Tuncurry area with a few outliers found in the Sydney and Central Coast area. The majority of nesting activities are falling across about a 450 kilometre range of coastline in the northern New South Wales area. This is a huge amount of coastline to patrol. So this is where citizen scientists can play an, an important role in helping to gather this information. We also uh, broke down our nesting activities uh, into local government areas. And we did find that in two of the seasons, uh, nesting activities were distributed across six different LGAs. So this is working with six different council groups, six different national parks groups. Uh, so again, having uh, citizen scientists out there reporting this data and helping to monitor these nests helps to uh, protect and monitor these important nesting activities across the coast. We also investigated the fate of each of the nests that were recorded and how this might impact our involvement with citizen scientists, such as hatch success rates, failed nests, and how citizen sciences, scientists could help with these nests, uh, predated nests, relocated nests, incubation times uh, for each of these nesting activities and the temperature data that has been recorded in the past and how all of these uh, these parameters can impact citizen science scientist activities. So we took all this information in the historical review about the trends, distribution and fate of nests and utilised it to help guide our New South Wales Turtle Watch program, including how we involved our citizen scientists, how we helped to engage the local community, and how we could use this data to better monitor nesting events in New South Wales. 
as we began to redevelop the New South Wales Total Watch program, we, were sh uh, we made sure to include the 10 key principles outlined by the Australian Citizen Science Association, uh, including things such as by how the program would benefit both science and society and making sure to provide feedback to citizen scientists as well. The New South Wales Total Watch Program has also utilised frameworks set out by the New South Wales Government's SEED initiative, which details how to involve citizen scientists, make project plans and manage data. There are three main components recognised for the, the development of the New South Wales Total Watch Program, including citizen scientist involvement, community engagement and nest monitoring. And to achieve these goals, we started out by producing an app for New South Wales Total Watch, creating a communication and engagement plan, and also nest monitoring guidelines. New South Wales Total Watch has created an app using ArcGIS Survey 123. The goal of the app is to have a centralised location for citizen scientists to report their beach monitoring patrols. This data can then be used to extrapolate trends in nesting activities of sea turtles along the coast of New South Wales. Now, when the citizen scientists open up the app, the first thing they see is a reminder of what sea turtle tracks look like and phone numbers to call if they do see sea turtle nesting activities during their walk. Then there's a page where they can uh, map out where they have walked along the beach and it gives them an estimate of the length they have traveled during their beach patrol. Once you are happy with your beach patrol map, you click save and then you have the option to indicate, did you see sea turtle tracks on your walk? Yes or no. It's important to record where we don't see sea turtle tracks as well as where we do see sea turtle tracks to get a better idea of where they are, they are occurring along the coast, but also where they're not occurring along the coast. Then there's a page where you can report any threats that you see during your walk, including marine debris, vehicle impacts, and potential light pollution on the beaches. All this threat information can then be shared with uh, stakeholders and collaborators, such as council groups and community groups uh, that can help to protect our beaches from uh, these impacts in the future. A communication and engagement plan was created for the program to ensure the message of New South Wales Total Watch is delivered accurately to the target audience in a timely manner using appropriate channels and engaging stakeholders. Five key event locations were recognised along the coast that are spread evenly according to the distribution of nesting events to allow all citizen scientists access to these events and allow them to engage with the staff. However, COVID-19 threw a bit of a spanner in the works, as it did for everybody, with these proposed event sites, as we couldn't uh, do the proposed activities that we had planned. So we had to adapt and change, and instead of doing uh, beach cleanups at each of these locations, we did small group beach cleanups with just family and friends at uh, at their hometown beaches along the coast, which did actually allow us to uh, cover more area with these cleanups instead. Uh, we also did online training tutorials rather than group training sessions to adapt to this. And then we also created monthly newsletter updates that uh, help to give our citizen scientists feedback each month on nesting activities along the coast. One area that was highlighted by the historical review and was seen when we investigated the fate of sea turtle nests was that many of the records had data gaps and inconsistencies, most likely due to marine turtle nesting being infrequent in New South Wales. To address this, uh, these gaps, we have created nest, uh, nesting and excavation data sheets, as well as beach monitoring guidelines for use by citizen scientists and volunteers. Of course, we did not reinvent the wheel for this. We utilised similar layouts and questions as those defined by other nest monitoring programs. An interesting observation that was noted when reviewing the numbers of nesting activities was that some of the peaks in reports coincided with when there was increased interest and involvement from the nesting program such as here in 2008 when w with WWF involvement then in 2017, when the program was redeveloped, 
and then again in 2020 with the introduction of the Turtle Watch app. This, of course, could just be coincidence, but there is a definite impact of having increased exposure of the program in these seasons. We hope to compare our data in the future to our neighbours on the Sunshine Coast to see if we're seeing any similar trends in nesting activities. In the first season, util utilising the app, we recorded nine times more kilometres walked by citizen scientists than in the previous season. Citizen scientists walked over a thousand kilometres across 37 beaches in northern New South Wales during the four months of nesting season and contributed over 330 hours to the project. Eight out of the 19 activities were reported through the app, where in previous seasons, most reports came through national parks ranges. The most common threat reported through the app was the presence of marine debris, with 65% of patrols reporting finding marine debris. 7,327 pieces of debris were collected, with the most common items reported being plastic, plastic bottles, wrappers, and bottle, bottle tops. All data was uploaded to the Marine Debris Database. Public surveys were conducted before and after the appointment of the project officer for the New South Wales Turtle Watch to gauge the level of knowledge in the community about sea turtle uh, nesting activities. And so for initial surveys were conducted in 2019 and then post evaluation surveys were conducted in 2021. And we did see an increase in awareness of both those that knew about nesting sea turtles in New South Wales and also the number of threats that sea turtles face as well. Uh, so we did see an increase in both of those. Uh, and then we also saw that the media presence doubled uh, around nesting sea turtle activities along the mid-north coast as well. With the appointment of the project officer and the creation of standardised data collection protocols, we were able to obtain full data sets from each of the nesting sites with the assistance of citizen scientists, including the deployment of temperature data loggers at all re reported nesting sites. This will allow for more consistent data for long-term monitoring. All monitoring activities of sea turtle nests are conducted only under authorisation from New South Wales National Parks and Wildlife staff. Feedback was sought from rangers after the completion of the nesting season, and all rangers agreed that the involvement of citizen scientists in monitoring efforts was a great asset and value. Incubation times of nests in New South Wales are longer due to lower temperatures, sometimes exceeding 100 days. Having the dedication of volunteers to help check nests over this extended time period is definitely a great help to rangers that can have many work commitments and time constraints. One really important aspect of this program has been uh, in the last few seasons, the incorporation of more uh, indigenous inclusion in our nesting activities along the New South Wales coast. At a few of our nest sites this year, we were able to engage the indigenous elders to participate in excavations, relocations, um, and some of these activities actually happened on specific beaches that are very important to local indigenous mobs. And we were really proud to have worked with many of these mobs throughout the season. The main goal of New South Wales Turtle Watch is to promote the long-term survival of marine turtles in New South Wales by enlisting citizen scientists, promoting public awareness and assisting with nest monitoring efforts, New South Wales Turtle Watch can impact conservation efforts. The data collected by citizen scientists can be utilised by management both at local and state levels to ensure we protect critical nesting habitats. Through collecting more consistent data, we can better predict long-term trends in nesting activities. And with citizen scientists reporting on threats on potential nesting beaches, we can better manage and protect these habitats. This program relies on the participation and dedication of citizen scientists and volunteers. I would like to thank all those that have volunteered and everyone who has given their time to help protect threatened marine turtles. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them in the chat box or feel free to send me an email anytime. Thank you for listening and stay safe, everyone.